Egypt's foreign minister Sameh Shukri has paid an official visit to Ankara where he met his Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu. The two ministers said they are taking concrete steps in reappointing ambassadors and will enhance cooperation to ensure stability in Libya. The meeting comes just weeks after Cavusoglu made a landmark visit to Cairo, the first of its kind in a decade. Shukri's visit to Turkey is his second since March when he toured the country's south in a show of solidarity following the February 6 earthquakes. Diplomatic ties between the two countries had been cut off after a 2013 coup in Egypt overthrew then-President Mohamed Morsi. But the recent meetings have raised expectations that full diplomatic relations will be restored soon. Their rapprochement follows others in the region, including with Iran, which recently reopened its embassy in Saudi Arabia. Bahrain and Qatar also announced restoration of diplomatic ties, ending a years-long dispute. And to discuss how the reconciliation between Egypt and Turkey might influence the region, joining me now from London is Jane Kinnament. She is the Policy and Impact Director at the European Leadership Network and from Istanbul. Cengiz Tomar, he is a professor at Marmara University, specializing on the Middle East. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So Cengiz, let me begin with you. Turkish and Egyptian foreign ministers have met once again in their latest step to fully restore ties, although no timetable. Uh, was announced on the reappointment of the ambassadors, but sides seem to be agreed on working on getting it done soon. So what's your take on their latest meeting? Uh, actually, it is very important for the whole region. Uh, you know, just, you know, the region changed dramatically in the last uh, two years. We have global change and regional change and domestic change in both countries. Uh, but globally, uh, but problem between the uh, US, uh, Russia and China and Ukrainian problem and also a uh, regional case, everybody is now going to be France, Israel, Gulf countries, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and now uh, the, the turn uh, between uh, Egypt and Turkey and also both countries have some economical problems mm -hmm. and both of them, they need each other uh, these days. Uh, that's why it's very imp imp uh, important. Why? Because in, if we look at the history of Turks and uh, Egyptians in more than 1,000 uh, years, I think the, 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 the last crisis was the, one of the most important crises in the last uh, yes. 100 years. Now they will to, uh, solve the problem in, uh, you know, in this summer or in the uh, autumn, I hope. So, Jane, Libya was one of the issues that two uh, foreign ministers had discussed. Cavusoglu said, although they have some differences in methods, both uh, countries want to see some stability in Libya. So, how deep do differences run between Turkey and Egypt, especially when it comes to Libya? good that they talked so much about Libya since it's probably the most difficult issue that is dividing yes. the two countries. But I think it has become clear to both of them that no one is winning, everyone is losing, you know, and neither side can completely prevail in Libya. So this is probably a start. There will still be a lot of the details to be worked out. I think progress will be slow for that reason. Both countries have significant economic interests there, but it's important at least that there seems to be a decision. We have to find a way to share power uh, for the parties that we support in Libya to share power and, and not be so focused on fueling conflict. So, Jenny, could Turkey and Egypt's uh, normalization efforts be considered as part of the realignment of the wider Middle East? I think so, yeah. Uh, uh, this is exactly that I want because uh, in the clash uh, times in whole Middle East history, uh, foreign powers are coming to Turkey last crusaders then. Uh, Mongols and now as America and Russia, but not the, all the countries, you know, they uh, come together and it is very good for uh, the Middle East. I think it's uh, going well right now. I hope in, you know, we have some problems in Libya, as you mentioned, but I think we uh, can be uh, there a win-win process for two countries in Li Libya, uh, better than lose-lose pro uh, project or lose-lose uh, uh, policy, and also for economics. And uh, because uh, both countries are the most populated countries uh, of the region, 100 million almost, both of them. And mm -hmm. this is very important for the economy, culturally, Tur Turks and uh, Arabs and Egypt is the, the brain of 
uh, culture of the all uh, Arab countries. And that's why I think also this uh, Mediterranean issue, energy issue, uh, economical issues, and also army and some defense uh, sectors, they can uh, make uh, the Middle East better yes. than the uh, last 10 years. So Jane, I mean, how fast are normalization efforts across the region moving forward? I mean, are you surprised uh, about their pace? Absolutely. I mean, even this week, there is so much going on. There is the Arab League meeting to discuss possibly readmitting Syria. Yes. Uh, there was the news yesterday that Qatar and Bahrain have mended ties, which is the last piece of the puzzle in ending that rift between the, the GCC. So there is a, a lot of movement, which I think is really interesting. But it does need to be remembered. A lot of this is a change of mindset on the parts of the leaders. And that's really important. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all of the root causes of the problems are being addressed and of course that comes up especially with Syria there may mm -hmm. be a normalization with Syria but there is no improvement in the situation in the country in terms of the internal conflict and the repression and the human rights problems so there's a surface level improvement but there's still a, a lot of work to be done after these meetings. So, um, Genghis, uh, China just brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, which was uh, very significant from that standpoint. And Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Mektat visited Cairo on Saturday. How important was this visit as it represented a major step between a key Saudi ally and a key Iranian ally? Yeah, I think it is very important for the uh, you know region as well because now Syria and the the most difficult problem for uh, the Middle East and uh, after that Libya comes but it, Libya is possible to solve uh, more uh, or quicker than uh, Syria but Syria is the most important problem now uh, relations between Arab countries and Syria Gulf and uh, Egypt is going better and better and then it uh, also the uh, relation between Egypt and Turkey uh, makes further uh, contribution to peace in Syria. And also uh, China's interference uh, is very important, very surprising and very confusing as well. But uh, uh, all the United States interference and then we now we see uh, Iraq and Syria, I think uh, maybe because of China uh, interfere with all especially with soft power and trade. That's why I think mm -hmm. it's, it will be good for whole country, whole uh, region. So, Jane, could these latest diplomatic maneuvers lead to Syria returning to the Arab League soon? I mean, what are the challenges? Uh, which countries are mostly opposed to this? Because we know Saudi Arabia and Egypt were against it, but now it seems like they're kind of changing their positions. What do you make of it? I think they're still waiting to see, you know, what, if anything, is Syria willing to give them. There's a, an interest to some extent in bringing it back into the Arab fold and away from Iran. But actually, that kind of realignment, that was tried, you know, back in 2008, 2009. It wasn't very effective. There's also some questions about, you know, will there be anything that is beneficial for the Syrian people? Could there be assurances of safety for refugees to go home? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is there that might help the humanitarian situation post the earthquake in the areas that are opposition held? So I think there'll be a lot going on, you know, to say, what, what can we get? Because mm -hmm. once we have normalised, that's it. You know, actually, this is the moment at which the Arab countries have the most leverage. So, Genghis, how would Syria's comeback, let's say, to the Arab world, uh, Arab fold, um, impact the possibility of restoring ties between Ankara and the Syrian regime? Yeah, actually, we are waiting for that. But the uh, Syri Syrian issue is very problematic. Uh, Russia is there and America, United States, and now creating uh, some uh, satellite uh, state there and also Iran and Turkey and it's most difficult problem and it takes maybe 10 years to solve it and rehabilitation maybe more than 20 years but uh, at least to talk with uh, Syria and Turkey is much uh, better to get you know some uh, solution uh, because both countries are uh, you know 
900, more than 900 kilometers border and now 5 million almost in Turkey. And also we have a very important cultural uh, tie with uh, Syria. Yes. I think, uh, you know, in last one, two years and we can, you know, uh, talk to Syria, especially this uh, asylum seekers problem. Uh, and democracy and also uh, constitutional problems of Syria. But it takes ten, at least 10 years to rehabilitation in Syria. All right, Genghis and Jane, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.